Hi everyone, it's Christina from Christina's Art Corner. How are you all doing today? I thought I would do something a little different uh, on my channel. The driving force to doing that is that I'm having some health issues. I wanted to do a part two full color along on this book that I was working on that I have a part one up on my channel. I'm just struggling to film edit uh, after coloring there's quite a bit of leaves and things here it's going to take me quite a bit of time so i thought what i would do instead if it's all right with you all and feel free to leave comments uh, if you like uh, about it but i thought i would work in several books the idea comes from colored by maya if you haven't checked out her channel i would do so i'm going to leave her information in the description I know Coloring with Kay had reached out to her to see if maybe she wouldn't mind her doing updates on her channel and some other colorist YouTubers. And so I've also reached out to Colored by Maya to let her know that I need to do some health updates and maybe work on some whips and show you all a little bit of the process about several of the pages that I'm doing rather than just focusing on one book. Not to say that I won't be able to do full color alongs in the near future, but while I am recovering, from some health issues. I am hoping that this will be all right with you all. In these updates, I am going to show you a few things, maybe uh, some haul items, and also just, yeah, show you what I've been doing the last month, this month. So I think we'll go ahead and start. I will start out with Birds in the Forest by Denise Collette. This is my part one video that I did. And I'm so sorry that I didn't get to upload my part two. We're here and we're going to work on it some for sure. Amongst others. So maybe before we start, uh, come to think of it, let me just show you the other books that I'm going to work in today. I'm going to work in my Pop Manga Beauties and Beast Beasties by Camilla D'Errico, my Mythic World Kirby Rosanna, my Sweet and Simple Whimsy Girls by Hannah Lynn, my Spooky hashtag that I host. Witch Cat Spooky. Also, I also have a group buddy color hosted by a doodle robot by Emily Lydahall Oberg. And so we have a page in there to do too. And then if there's time, uh, I might work in one of these. These are the two buddy colors with my granddaughter. But we'll see how it goes because there's also some <clears throat> diamond painting things that I also want to show you as well. I did get a request for that. So we'll do that also. All right, back to, to the beginning. So let's go ahead. Now we did Outbreak Doers on this. I still, I have a doled out bowl here that I need to make purdy. And I need to do uh, their perch and all the leaves. So one thing I don't like about this particular case here is opening from the side because it's not great for videos. <laughs> but uh, here we'll go ahead and I'll pick out the colors and we'll see what we've got. Someone just left a post on one of my haul videos and says, you have a very fake laugh. And I was like, wow, that's rude. Generally any user that doesn't have a profile picture and it starts with their handle is user dash like A, B, F, two, three, C, whatever is generally a troll. So I don't take much, much stake in it. I thought about uh, just removing the comment, but I figured I'll leave it up there. That's, that's your comment. That's fine. But I can assure you I don't have a fake laugh. I don't think I could make that one up. It's always going to be some haters. That's for sure. Can't take too much stake in it. I tell you, as I pull out the greens, I think actually what I decided is I might make these purple leaves and some of these flowers... Since I've used the yellow and orange and blue already, I was thinking about using some contrasting with the purple and then these flowers. I think I had decided that I wanted to use blues, but some of them butt up against the birds. I could do a uh, turquoise. So let me rethink which pencils I'm getting out. Let's see about the purple selection. I think we could go with these three. Let's see what works. Use a Tombow water-based marker instead of using the water this time, just to give us some variety. Try to show you different ways that I use these things. So I do get a lot of questions on how I do certain pages. And I thought this would be a good way to kind of, I am no expert in coloring. I just want to make that as a, uh, a disclaimer. 
but I do my best. <laughs> All right. So on these pages, on these leaves, I thought maybe I'll go dark, medium, light, and then do the Tombow marker. So let's see. Let's just try one. Let's just see what happens. So I'm going to go there. And uh, sorry, the colors that I'm using, this is mauve. The next one I'm using is a blue violet. And then my light color is going to be uh, violet. All right. So I'll do a little bit of this and blend it into that first color. And then I'll go with the light, but I'm not going to bring it all the way down. I'm going to let that be the Tombow's work. Let me just get a blotting page going. Just want to make sure that we don't have any other colors left. All right. So I'm going to bring this lighter color up. Okay. And then I'm going to go mid range and bring that up a little bit. And then we'll go with our mauve. And give that a little blend and then if I need to carry the color any further and it's not enough with doing it wet then I will come back with the same pencils and go over them all right so let's let's go ahead and do a bunch you don't have to be super specific on how you're putting it down just get that color in there. All right, and then let's go in with our next, our medium color. And with our lightest, only going part of the way. Okay, let's see how these work out. Come from the lightest to our mid-tone, dragging it. And then our darkest. And blend that out a little bit. Do the same thing with this one. Keep going here. I like using the Tombow marker because you don't get a ton of water on the page. You can even bring that darker color all the way through. Just drag it through the center. Okay, so I think that's what we're going to do on the leaves with those three colors. And let's see what we want to do for, let's see what we want to do for the flowers. Now, like I said, I'm a little nervous about buttoning up against the blue, so I think I might go with a different tone blue and let's do turquoise so our darkest color is going to be the bluish turquoise and then we're going to do middle phthalo blue and then this one is the light cobalt turquoise and let's do a flower here okay let's butt up against one of these blues and see how we do so i, I take my darker color at the bottom of the flower and then get lighter from there. Now, flowers aren't necessarily my forte. It's been a learning process for me. Because any kind of artwork that I've done, 
has not really been flowers. Not that I don't like them. I just challenge <laughs> my abilities. But I've had some success doing it this way, so that's what we'll do. Try to get as much variation of color as we can here. See if I've hit all the spots. Okay. And then let's go with our medium and I go over that a little bit and leave room for the lightest. You could actually just use the two and use the Tombow marker to just blend the two so that you would have a more room for your light. That's also another option because if you tend to fill the whole white space, then it can become like just all a color of blue once you're blending it. So let's do dark over here and then we'll make that light. All right, so light turquoise going on the end here. And I'm just going to do a tiny, tiny little line here just to keep a little bit of that white space. And then we have some lights over here. I think I got them all. All right. Let's see how Tombow does here. I'm going to start from my light and go around. Start from my light and go back. All right, I think we're good with that as a start. Again, I can go over once that's dry and just make, probably I would just do my two darker colors. Actually, I can do it a little bit wet to show you what I mean. I'll go back with the darker. Just darken those up a little bit. Dry. Since the Tombow doesn't make it super saturated wet, you can do this a little earlier than, say, if you're using full-on water. So something like that. What do you think? All right. Let me go in with some brown for the bark. See what we could do here some browns. Let's do let's go ahead and do nougat, van dyke brown, and burnt umber. So I'm going to go with my burnt umber and I'm just going to kind of follow the lines that are indicated on the branch. Just kind of yeah, just follow the line. Okay. And then my next darker color is the Van Dyke Brown. And I'm going up against 
the first color we used. Okay, and then we'll follow up with Nougat. And get those places we haven't hit. And then I'll definitely have to go over with dry for this one. You could get rid of that blue. All right. Now I'm going to follow my lines first. Just go right over them with the Tombow. Right over that glazed pen too. <laughs> and then hit the rest. I'm thinking what I might do is do some of these blue and then I might be able to bring the yellow back into some of these um, flowers, but I think I'll pick some different tones for some of these here, and all of these can be blue. That's that's what I'm thinking I'll do with the rest of the page. All right, so let's go in with our Burnt Umber. It's still a little bit wet, but that's okay. Just wanna create a little more definition. And then we'll go in with our Van Dyke Brown. I'm going to go back with my darker one more time. And I could actually activate that a little bit more if I wanted. Okay, so we have a nice variation on the bark, and I can tweak that more if I choose to when I'm finishing up the page. I guess let's do the, let's do one of these flowers. All right. Okay. Let's do... I think actually what I could do is I could do yellow and then leave the edge white. So I've got my cadmium yellow and I'm just going to put that here at the base. Go all around. Make this quick. And then I have my light cadmium yellow. Just bring that out a little bit. And then I have my cream. And I'll go here. Not going, oops. How did I miss these two?
Okay. Now let's go and activate that. So I'm going to bring this yellow up the cream. Not all the way to the top, but mostly. And then I'm going to go in with the darker and drag it. And that's still pretty wet. Let me go in with my cadmium yellow and just darken these edges. And then I just see some splotchiness here I want to drag out. Okay, so I think that will be good for these flowers here. And then we'll do a brown center. Just a little bit. And then I'll probably dot it with some Posca. Let me get my darkest brown in there. Yeah. So that, oops, I tried to put the pencil in the marker. You got some yellow on there. Okay. All right, so there's that. Now on the bow, we have these colors here. And this was the pink matter lake and the fuchsia and the mid purple pink. And so I just need to do a little more definition here and probably use a Posca. Get my shadows in here a little darker and we'll use a metallic too. Darken up the edges of these. lightest last okay all right so let's use yeah let's go ahead and use a metallic I think I'll do a hoo-hoo glitter marker. Okay. Let's give some of these circles on the bow some glitter. I'm just going to do the outside ring. Sure, I get them all here. Now I definitely have to let this dry thinking of it before 
I try to put some Posca on there, otherwise it's just gonna bleed. Bleed pink. That might be enough without Posca for now. So here we are, because I know with the light changes, it's difficult to see sometimes, but there's the metallic on the bow, and there's our flower and our leaves, and there's the other flower. Yeah, I think that will look nice. I was worried about doing a yellow flower since I have yellow in my sunset background, but I think by leaving the white edges, we'll be good to go. I could even put a hint of, uh, like, uh, which color? I already have it here. I could use the dark chromium yellow. In fact, let's do that. I can put that here just to give it a little more variance. And let's see, I may activate that just a little. And then I would go over dry. So yeah, that makes a little darker tone there in the center. I think I like that. Okay, so we're gonna put this one away and start a new one. And let me put these. I have a little bucket here where I put things I'm working on. So let's go into Spooky. By Sarah Says Wick. This is my hashtag Witch Cat Spooky. And this month we're doing this page. So I've already started with some Tombows. And I think we need to make the owl. I'm thinking some browns. Uh, I think I could do a purple hat. And for that, let's pick out a color from their color chart. Let's see, 606 seems like a contender. Um, the 600 range, yeah. So let me go in and find my 600. So from this chart, 620 is a lighter one. And then 606, is it on here? I don't see the 606 unless I'm just, oh, there it is. Wow, 603, I have some duplicates of some of these, so I have to watch out. Um, 603. So I think we'll do 606 and 63, and then we have our lighter with the 620. So I'm going to make the lighter edge here, and then we'll do a lighter edge here. And then I may... Actually, I might do lighter in the center of that part. And then my 603 is the next lightest, and I'm just gonna shoot that down the middle. And then I can take my lighter one while that's still wet. And then go back and give this another layer. And then I'm gonna take my darkest over here to the edge where these lines are indicated by Sarah. And then I'm gonna put a dark edge here and then one. Normally I make this part of the hat a different color. That's my lighter one and this is the medium tone. And I'm just going to bring my middle tone up into this dark area here. And then I'm going to bring this darkness out just a little bit and redefine that. 
And then under here is normally darker. That shadow. And then on the rim, let's just see if I want to go any darker. Now here it's showing that there's some darkness, these hash marks. So I'll follow her lead and then let's get some of this mid-tone here. And then the key to doing this is making sure you do it while it's still wet, just so you can get a little blending in here. There we go. I can even drag that darker onto the rim from these areas here. And then we'll go in with our 620, which is our lightest. And then I'll probably do a Posca line through there. Oops. Okay. And then I haven't decided on the on the outside color of the um, light bulb area, but I'm thinking actually I could make that a purple. Let's go ahead and do it. Just put some light areas. I do some light at different areas, then blend the medium and then the dark. Since we have our light source over here, I'm trying to keep that light. All right, let's go in with our medium. Start dragging that around. On either side of the light. And then we'll go in with the darker, that little area here. Okay, then I go back with my medium and drag the dark on either side. Just to give that a blend. All right, and then I'm gonna go back with my lightest and fill in the voids. Okay, that gives you a little idea there. And I'm gonna do this one the same. Medium color. Medium color. And I'll go over these bubbles with Posca. Medium, 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 and then dark.
I'm going to carry my medium a little further here. Okay. I'm going to go back to that dark and make sure that we've got some blendy blendy action going on. Go, let's see here. Go with light. You can see I'm going right over the dark just to like drag some of that color. This helps blend it a little better. You have to make sure with this paper, although it's butter paper, you don't want to put too much water on it because it will pill the paper. Trust to know. But I'm usually pretty safe if I just do this lightly, like I don't put a lot of pressure on it. Might have to go a little more with the medium here. And then go back to my light. And then I go back once it's dry to see how it looks. If I need to do any more layering, I will. Okay, so that's how that's going to look there. And then I'll probably do, do I wanna do a gray screwy top? I probably do. And I'll make that a cool color. Let's go with the uh, N, N52, N75, N75, N52. Oh, I might not have an N52. What do you know? Uh, N89. We do have that. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to go in the centers. I'm going to go at the top here. And then we have some dark. This is the N75. Just gonna hit all those areas that have dots or lines. Then I'm going to go back with my lighter color. And then one more with the darker. Okay, we've got that one done. Like I said, I'll probably use a little Posca for some highlights. I 
I'm coming straight down on the marker because there's some small areas here. Sometimes I'll even dot. Okay, I think both of those are good for now. I haven't decided about my background yet, uh, but we'll, we'll see. I'll probably do one just maybe just, just around, not the whole page, but just around the light bulbs. So that's a little work we did in Spooky by Sarah Sedgwick. And if you want to be a part of this uh, group buddy color, it's hashtag witchcatspooky. And we're going to do that until the book's finished. So if you, I have some whips in here. And a couple of pages, a couple of months I couldn't um, participate. But yeah, we still have plenty of pages to go. But these sure are fun could use all kinds of mediums and mediums in them you just got to be a little I like that one just a little careful not to brush back and forth too much when you're using well even alcohol markers okay so that's spooky now let's get into Kirby and before I totally get into Kirby I'll go ahead and do my health update that I said I was gonna do All right, my pink dragon. This is for Dana's coloring obsession hashtag for pink dragons. I just see a spot automatically that I want to get darker. <laughs> These are the Krita colors. It's funny in different lighting how you you see because sometimes I color in bed. Let me just get you because I know light is shining on here and blurring it out. But that's what it really looks like. <laughs> and I use Tombow marker to base all of the dragon um, except for the white parts and um, the trees. I did not base the roof uh, or these um, well, I did actually. I did wind up because I wasn't sure if I was going to make that dragon colors or fire colors, and I decided on fire. All right. So I think I want to show you a little bit on what I do here in these. And I'm just going to see if taking some of that light off helps. I'm not sure it does. If I get up a little, let me just change. The value since see when I tip it you can see the darker colors I'll do my best and then I'll show you okay so I can bring this down closer to me let me move my light source a little bit there we go okay health updates and I've shared with you all that I've had a shoulder impingement uh, starting in December went to the doctor got uh, injections uh, and, and I'll explain this in a second. Okay. So I've had a shoulder impingement. It still hurts. Uh, the injection helps some, but anytime I'm doing coloring, uh, for long periods of time anyway, um, and I do take a long time to color generally, my shoulder starts hurting. I do have cervical dystonia in my neck that I get Botox in every three months. And I have a window of when I'm needing Botox and then I get the Botox every three months. I get about four to five weeks of relief. Otherwise, my neck starts pulling towards my shoulder and it's painful. It's like Charlie horses that don't stop. So I, I battle through it. I take medication, some muscle relaxers, and, and on a daily I have to take those as preventative medicine. But recently I started having foot problems. It hurt to walk. And so I went to the doctor and he said that I have posterior, posterior tibial, like deformity, like a tendinopathy with a deformity on both feet, not just one. So I got injections. I'll insert a picture of what it looked like after the injection and, and I was swollen. Um, and then 
uh, two weeks later, which was yesterday, I went back and uh, he had braced me the first time on the foot that he injected and then he left the other one alone to see if it worked. And now I got injected last yesterday evening and then another brace. So both my feet are in braces, lace up and Velcroed to like mid calf. And I need some new shoes. And then after this will be orthotics, but eventually I'm headed to surgery, but I am going to put that off, honestly, as long as I can, probably years. <laughs> if I can stand it, because what they do, little disclaimer, if you don't like medical talk, you can turn off, but they basically slice your heel at an angle, separate the heel, move your ankle over, put screws and things in there, and then they go to the top of your foot, and they also have to work with the tendon that wraps around and the ligament. They're basically reconstructing the foot, and they also have to go through the other side of the ankle. So it's a lot. Like I say, it's reconstruction of your foot. So let me color, and then I'll continue talking. So uh, what I've been using is the Sioux Color Metallic Pink and these Mega Creta Colors. Uh, and Salomon and magenta and then I have my black and I also use these Caran Dash full blenders and I'll just show you my stash because it's kind of funny look <laughs> because I press a little I'm a little hard-handed and so <laughs> those are my little Caran Dash full blenders <laughs> um, okay so I go in with my Sioux color first and I go on these edges and then I'll follow with you would think this is the lighter pink by the dip color, but it's the darker pink. And then this is the lighter pink, even though it's dark dip, uh, dipped dark. <laughs> I can't talk. All right. So let me just show you. All right. The doctor says there's no way to fix without surgery. You can't make an arch that's not there. Basically, because my tendons have failed, I have no arch left in my feet. And so that's not a great feeling. And it's painful to stand, to walk, uh, even just laying down in bed. Uh, but obviously more difficult when I'm standing and moving around. And as you all know, if you follow my channel, I am an active grandparent and have my grandchildren over quite frequently and I don't want to lose that agility to keep up with them. <laughs> Actually, I think they're going to spend the night tonight, give their mom and dad a break. We do a reward system. Uh, two of my grandchildren have autism. And so we try to do a reward system for uh, good behaviors and they, they do well in school for the most part. It's just there are some meltdowns and uh, the teachers, well, that's a whole nother video maybe. <laughs> uh, but it's difficult to get autistic children the help they need in the school system without a fight. So we're having to do that a little bit right now. Mostly my daughter, but I usually help. I don't want to lose my ability to do the things I want to do with my grandchildren and having these ailments does make it challenging for me. You know, my partner definitely steps in. Um, there's back problems there, so uh, injections are coming. <laughs> it's just, it's just hard. And the reason why I thought that I could do these maybe update videos is it gives me a chance to work in several books and show you what I'm using rather than just explaining in my completed pages and doing full color longs. As you can see, I failed to do my part two in the Birds in Paradise by Denise Collette. Uh, it's because all this medical stuff came up. I do apologize. I know I don't have to apologize for health. It's not something I can avoid. None of my conditions are avoidable. I could maybe help myself if maybe I lost a few pounds to take some of the pressure off. But at the end of the day, you have a flat foot. You're not giving it an arch. If you're in early stages, 
they can help restructure an arch, but apparently this has been going on for a while. And the pain in my feet, to be honest, for quite a while was not as painful as my shoulder and my neck generally. I do mask a lot. Maybe that's something to talk about. I generally don't show that I'm in any kind of pain because I don't want other people to feel uncomfortable around that. And that may be wrong of me. I just don't want my life focus to be what kind of pain I'm in. And it's, these are chronic conditions. My shoulder impingement is the second one in two years. I had shoulder surgery already. Um, I have autoimmune illnesses. It's just, I don't know. I guess I got dealt some bad luck there and I wanted to reach out to you all and let you know. I just, I apologize so greatly because I've, I've said before, I don't like to commit to a color along and then not be able to do it. I just, makes me feel bad, you know. And I know you all will probably say, take the time you need because you're beautiful people. I just, it's difficult for me to function like that, really. I just, I go, go, go. And I don't, I don't take care of myself enough, I know. And that's not going to be helpful in these chronic conditions. So I do need to take better care of myself, rest more. It won't get me to stop coloring <laughs> or diamond painting, which I've had some diamond paintings a while. They've sat in my closet. And then when my granddaughter was interested, it sparked the interest to do it again. And I'll show you a few haul items that I have also in this video. These are probably going to be longer videos, uh, but it allows me to give you a variety of content as far as what I'm coloring, what I'm using. I'm basically just putting some dark edges in here with the black. You'll see they're in these areas here. And then I'm going to blend. And I'm going to blend with my Caran d'Ache Full Blender. So I'm going to go from the top and push that pink up. And it becomes like a lighter pink. And then I don't go too heavy on the rest of it initially with the blender. Just basically want to get that pink area blended at the top. Just pushing that color in there with the blender. Just taking the edge and pushing up. And I'm still gonna go over it. But I want that lightest area there. It looks rough in the beginning. Don't worry. It smooths out. <laughs> Sometimes I get too far up there and I don't get a white area or drag the black like I just did into that tip. <laughs> but I am trying to work a little faster so you can see. So yeah, it's, it's much easier so far for me to work in a few different books for you than to just stick with a page because I feel the pressure to finish it and that's where my problems come in. <laughs> okay, so now that I've blended the tip part, then I'm going to go back in with my darker color and over the black, sorry, Sue color. Sue color, kind of go up against the black. I don't really actually go over, over. Sometimes it just depends. Kind of eye it. And 
And then I take the Krita color, you'll see in a minute, and I go right over this metallic pink. And because I go over it, you don't really see any metallic. I mean, any metallic pencils generally don't have a lot of metallic properties, if you will. Can't, like, can't really tell they are. So, but it's helped be a color in this palette. So, okay, I'm going to take, this is where it starts to come together a little more. And I'm just going to hit where I went with the Sioux color. And I'm following Kirby's uh, hash lines to know where my darkest color should be. So I guess what I'm saying on my health update, if this is content that you enjoy, I will try to do color alongs, of course, when I can, but if a coloring update helps you see how I'm putting my pages together for the month, uh, I thought, thought it would be helpful to you and me. I do like to show the process of what I do, especially if you're interested. I like to accommodate that way and maybe I do some things different. Maybe I do some things the same as other colorists, but I try my best to give you some good content regardless. And that's, that's really the intent at the end of the day. All right. So our darker dipped is the lighter color, and I'm going to go now over the darker pink, pull that up more. Try to not drag it down too far into the dark pink, if you will. This one doesn't have enough dark. Neither does this one. Okay. And then what I'll do is I'll take my blender and carefully just go over that again. And I won't be as careful this time because I just want them to be blended. And then I just take my electric racer and get some dust off from where I push the blender. It's a super handy tool. Uh, say it is. Okay. So that's what those look like, those scales. And then I think I'll do one um, of the fire to show you the colors I'm using in there. 
So I have four different colors if I need to use them, but mostly I'm using the three. So I have a Cadmium Citron, a Naples Yellow, and a Carmine Extra Fine, and then I use the Matter Carmine, which is the darker of the two. Um, I use that for it coming out of the mouth. All right, so let's do this one here. Let's see if you can see that, okay. Now, again, there's hash marks, so I'm gonna put my reds in the hash mark on the lower part, because then I want, oh, I forgot to mention my orange, sorry. Orange is in there too, because I put the orange right over, or just above the red on these hash marks. Okay, so go in with orange. I love these mega colors, by the way. I thought that was also going to be a good way of when I show you, like if I do these updates, that I can show you what I'm loving about the supplies that I'm using. I think this is the first time I've used the mega color on film after hauling them, swatching them. I think it's good to give updates. Now I bring that yellow into the orange a little bit. Okay, and then I take my trusty blender. I wipe this off so that I don't have color transfer. And then I'm going to go over my yellow first. And then I'm going to start blending the yellow into the orange and then the orange into the red. And that's how I do the fire. Now I can touch things up a little bit. I can, you know, make things a little darker if I need to. But yeah, that's how I do the fire. So hopefully you can see that. And that's how I'm working on this page as far as the uh, foliage. I have greens. I've got these greens, um, moss green, light and dark. And then I also have olive green dark and grass green. So those are the colors that I can use. I'm going to keep those. I have this little tray. One thing I could show you also. This is my tray of pencils. It's getting quite thick for this page. I take the Holbein white. As you can see, it's getting kind of small. And over any of these areas, for instance, that maybe I took the pink too far, I can come and make a lighter area. That's the other thing that I'll do. And then I'll also give that a blend. There you go, you can see how I was able to get the white in there. So that is my Kirby page. I'll be working on this quite a bit to get it done by end of month. And let's see what else. I think I'll show you in Beauties and Beasties by Camilla D'Arico. Let me put my blender pieces up. Okay, so in this page, I had explained to you all that I might do a background of graffiti that's in the back of the creature. 
but I decided against it because I figured I'm going to run out of time if I spend too much time on this page drawing all the graffiti characters. And so what I decided to do instead is I used these acrylics here. The ones are a Newton Professional Graphite Gray, the Grumbacher Deep Violet, and then Dioxazine Purple from Windsor & Newton. I blended those together and I got this purple and maybe I will turn a different light on. Does that make it better? What is that? And we'll go all the way up. I'll show it around because it does have some different hues in it. So I did the purple background I'm not done coloring the creature, but then I went in with some gold leaf. And that was a lot of fun. So I have copper, silver, and gold in there. And I just put on the glue and waited for it to turn like uh, clear. And then just went in and I have leaf sheets, not crumbles, but I tried to like crumble them a little bit. They stick to your fingers even without the glue. And then I just kind of, you know, padded. This whole thing was covered and then I took my, I have a special brush that I only use for gold leaf. And then just went over, Let's see if I have any left. I do actually, I do have a couple flex. <laughs> I figured I would still have some but that's what I do and then I collect all my remnant and put it in a jar for another time now this is what was in the background before these little feathers so I blocked them out I'm gonna wind up going over that uh, but I have a lot of fun different colors in this creature and I'm just going to darken up and get my shadows and highlights a little more defined I need to get some better color going on this part of the wings. Need to do some eyeballs. I'll probably do some purple eyeballs and get a beak going. Yeah, and uh, I like this part. I just will do some touch-ups. And I used my Krita colors, my Mega Krita colors on this too. So that's just an update on what that's looking like. So I did change it up from the last time we spoke. And I'll be showing you in my completed pages, but I'll give you a sneak peek. I'll give you half the page. <laughs> this is a buddy color with Disney Meg. And I wound up having fun using all of my Karen Dash and other... Well, I gave you more than a peek, huh? Let me pull this over and put this here. Okay. So I used all that's in this case. So I have Museum Aquarelles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I have the 12 set. And then I have Creta Color Merinos. That's these here. I got these a while ago. I have the Creta Color Aqua Graphite. I have the Stettler Tinted. And it has a little brush on it, so it's water soluble. And I have about I think there's 12 of those too. And then I have these Koinor Progresso Aquarelles. And these are skinny and, and fun. They keep their point really well. I didn't even have to sharpen those. And then I have my Karen Dash Super Colors, which I enjoyed. I enjoyed using these wet and dry. Uh, my Super Colors wet and dry. And that's the end. I left room in case I have any other aquarelle type pencils but I used uh, some colors from each one of these sets and I really enjoyed using them on this page and then I have a bunch of metallics in there but I did a combination of wet and dry and yeah I enjoyed doing it so much I had a funny circumstance I'll probably say it again in my completed pages but Shmoo my puppy I had this was a light gray uh, not colored by me, but the book gives you a light gray. Let me see if I can show you. This kind of gray was along the top. Well, Shmoo came up. I was coloring on my bed, and he licked the page. I had already put down here in the wood area. I had already put down that color, and I had already activated it 
but he went and licked the page and it spread all over and it got a lot in the background so i had to do a black acrylic background <laughs> the joys of having a puppy i tell you what i couldn't be too mad at him he just wanted to spend time with me but that's in the bunny book by katoli in the fairy tales book i won't work in this one today here's my whip that i still need to get back to i started with my uh artex uh, acrylic marker sets and I don't know I I liked it until I added the purple I would still have to go in and define and shade and shadow all that good stuff so I'm not sure if I'll continue with the Artex acrylic uh, we'll see I'm definitely going to do the bear and pencils uh, for sure but I, I'm not completely decided that's why I don't think I'll color in this one today but that's how that is. So I've got quite a bit to do on that page. And then in my sweet and simple Hannah Lynn bubble of coloring, I and I are doing a buddy color. And this is what I have so far. And I've just used my Teo tree markers because they were, I keep a few supplies in my bedroom in a drawer set that I got. And so I keep the Teo tree in there. That's basically what I use for my magical chibis and winter chibis with my granddaughter. And I figured I would use those for these. So that's what I have so far. And I'll continue with alcohol marker and then I'll go in with some metallics on her sleeve area here. And probably other places. I'm try just trying to figure out what the background is all doing here. That's why I really haven't finished yet. But I'll be working on that soon. And I've used some of these SimTap acrylic markers that I hauled. Uh, okay. I do like them, but I've been having trouble. You see on here, I pumped it, I shook it, and it's got a little area. Maybe if you can see it better here. It's got a little area where it's not filled in. And I've like rubbed on a page. Watch it do it since I'm demonstrating the way it's supposed to. But if, even though I'm putting the pigment on here, that area on the brush is still staying like whitish. And I've pumped, I've shaken, and so sometimes I've had an issue with that being a problem. But overall, I do enjoy them. You do still have to shake a lot. Uh... I was trying to get some markers that I didn't have to shake too much, but obviously you have a pumper, you're still going to have to shake in between. Uh, but my black, I had a hard time on that page I just showed you, the bunny book. I had a hard time getting even coverage with the black. So I don't know. I think I, I do enjoy them, but I'm not totally sure if I would reach for them all the time. They do have some really nice colors in them, but see what I mean? And I've, I've used these quite a bit. I think it might be a case of maybe taking the nib out, washing it, and then putting it back, pumping again, shaking again. I could probably fix it that way. And I'll tell you what I had to... Coloring with Kay was mentioning that she was struggling a little bit with her Guangna Super Golden Colors markers. The Super Metal 12 colors. That they were not flowing well and so she talked to the company and they said to remove the nib so it's very similar to a tule art where remove the nib give it a wash pop it back in give it a good shake because sometimes at the other side I'll just pull it out and show you you can get clumpiness on the end here and it can prevent flow so just Run it under some water, get it clean, pop it in, and it immediately starts giving you uh, some of the uh, pigment. And so that was very helpful on her channel because um, I, w I can't say that I was having a lot of trouble, but I did have some issues with that. So between her channel and my channel, hopefully that will help you if you got those markers. They're good if you do that. I didn't have any problems after that. So that's a little post review on some haul items. And now we're going to get to some other haul items. And that'll be some 
diamond painting. I got these two from Diamond Art Club. And the first one is, let me see if I can get a big picture, a better picture. Let me pull the light over here. So this one is diamond shape round. Here is the picture. I've got to turn it this way and move, move my light. So you can see there, it's called Second Dream and it's beautiful. It's a 29 by 22. And you all let me know if you want me to unbox these in a video. I will be happy to, but for now, I'm just gonna show you what I got. And then, and these are rounds. This one's a round two. You can always tell by this uh, right here. And this one is called Close Encounters. And this is a 22 by 27. This is the one that I want to start on first of my Diamond Art Club kits. And I have been asked if I could show, uh, not the unboxing part, but starting to work on one. Because I have uh, a few subscribers that maybe want to get into diamond painting and kind of want to see the beginning, the starting of one. And this is the one that I definitely want to do next. So if you'd like to unbox me to unbox these and see what you get inside the kit, and the canvas, you all let me know, but I figured I would at least show you the pictures of them. And the other thing that I got from Diamond Art Club are the double-sided release papers. Probably gonna be putting this in a different container, so I'm not gonna worry about the box, I don't think. Double-sided release papers, you can take your canvas, lift up the initial plastic, set these down, and then you can use them to section off your diamond painting. So you could do this size sections at a time, or you could double them up and do a bigger section. But I definitely wanted to get their version for their paintings. That box came a little, um, this part came damaged, and so yeah. I'll put that in something else. Okay, I want to show you my coloring and crafting table that I use for in bed because I've been having to spend time in bed with ice on my feet and all the fun things. So I've had this table for quite a long time. They're on Amazon. It does have legs, but the legs brings it up too close to you. Let's see if I can show you this way. So they come out and they walk. And then the neat part about this, this is a battery pack that I use also from Amazon. I used to use it for my, I have a van that I converted into a camper van. And so these were handy to not have to have something plugged in. And these lights show that it's charged 25, 50, 75, and 100%. And it's uh, also solar chargeable. So that's cool. And let me take some of this off. And so what's nice is this table is adjustable. And I'll try to go on the lowest so that you could see. Okay. And then what I'm doing, now I'm testing some of this out for my grandbabies so that they can, they've asked to um, paint to diamond paint. And so I'm, I'm trying out a cheapy light board and I wound up going back to Timu. I know, shame on me or good on me, whichever it is. <laughs> All right, so you touch the little button and you can make it brighter. So this is me at night. And then I have some papers on here, and I'll just show you. So I got a few really small 20 by 20 centimeter diamond paintings from Timu. And what I did is I went into an app called Google Lens to try to find the origin of the artwork. And I could not find uh, an original artist. So it may be AI, I don't know. In this case, I'm not going to care too much, although I care in all other areas, especially coloring. But my granddaughter, when I gave her the diamond painting from Diamond Art Club that was bigger than the last one she did that you all saw, she was a little overwhelmed by the size. And I, I don't want her to get discouraged because she loves diamond painting. So I thought I would try out one of these. 
and see if it's a little easier. Plus, I have younger grandchildren than her that want to do diamond painting. So I thought these little image would be, be perfect. So it is a taped, not poured uh, canvas. And you know, it's cheapy, of course. Here's your table, you have 13 colors. I started off with one and two, so that's R and P. And yeah, so I think it's really, really cool. It has three different settings on this. I also got this from Timu. I have one that I got off Amazon. And that's the image but you can see the letters really well with the light source. That's even brighter. So yeah, I just started that uh, last night. Uh, I was feeling a little frustrated after my doctor's appointment and I was like, let me just go ahead and try this. And from Timo, I got these wax papers, they're small. And so I'm just sticking them on because the plastic cover was a pain in the you know what it's this and it's like sticking so much you could see all like the tape uh, marks on it so I was like okay let's not <laughs> let's not um, <clears throat> so I just stick these on actually try this just give it a press and there we go then that's covered I still put the plastic over it because you know we have puppy puppy dumb going on here and then a few so this allows me I'm not close the plug is behind me behind my bed it kind of crunches like this part because uh, I have a metal frame and so I only have my phone cord running through there. I don't want any other cords getting damaged. That's why I use this little handheld battery pack. It gives me several hours to be able to do whatever I'm doing in my room. And it's great for the diamond painting. And so I just thought that I would share that with you. Let me, let me move the table and then I'll show you the rest of the stuff. Or I could leave the table here maybe. These are the drills that come with the Timu uh, diamond painting and you know they're, they're not the quality of course that Timu has uh, sorry that Diamond Art Club has or Mooney Made or wherever else uh, diamond dots and whatnot there's no special ones in here it's just your colors and I don't think the um, what's the term I'm looking for the rendering let me just sh let me show you one more time let's just do that so I don't think the rendering is like super great because you, you see it's showing some colors that are outside of where you would place a diamond but we'll see what happens in the end I'm gonna try to finish it by month end so that you can see what one looks like from there you know I support artists all the time and I thought well do I really want to go back to Timu, but I wound up getting these for like, this was just over a dollar. And for my grandchildren to be able to do something like this with me, and it may be a bust or it may be something that, you know, sticks with them. That's what, that's was my thought process because, you know, I spent the money on, on the bigger canvas and my granddaughter, I just saw her face. She was overwhelmed, bless her heart. She still started working on it because she perseveres like her mommy and grand Grammy, but, uh, yeah, I just thought, you know what? I've had some success with Timu. There are things that I don't like about Timu, but here we are. This was super cheap. So I was able to get that. Uh, I got this little set here and they're perfect for the small paintings. I basically just took my first two colors and just put in a marker um, they don't give you stickers on the Timu, uh, diamond paintings. So I just put a, uh, marker, uh, what am I trying to say? A sticker, uh, placement and just wrote on there that this is one R and this is two P and I'll probably come up with a better system, but I just wanted to try out, see if these things are something I can present to my grandchildren was my thought process. 
And what's really cool about them too is that they give you on, let me go ahead and pull them out. And I'll have to show you the painting again. So you see on here that it says number CQ1843. So if you buy several of these, you can unpack them and I'll show you a folder system that I got. And the CQ1843 is actually on the bags. So you keep the bags separate from the diamond painting and you're good to go. And I'm just keeping them in this, these little things. They come in just, you know, so accidents don't happen. Especially if I'm doing it on bed and I have a puppy jumping on my bed. I'm having to do it a little different than I normally would. Okay. And then these nifty things. I got a pack of these. Let me just show you. So you stick. I stick this on here while I'm diamond painting. It's a double sticky thing. And then I also got this triple tray set. And let me show you what you can do. You have a hole on the end. And so you just stick it and it stays. It doesn't move. So that's perfect with this is lifted up and this stays. It's ergonomically better. And yeah, they give you these really cheapy <laughs> waxes. Um, you could never do a whole one, even the small, uh, with just one of these. So you'd need to have extra wax. But yeah, you just peel this off and then stick it back in. And then I, I was taking the next color, pouring in the diamonds, stick it in on there. Stays after you shake up and got what you want. Then the drill stay that way and you're good to go. And it's a good stick. <laughs> So I got this, again, from Timu. Just to make it clear, I'm not buying coloring stuff from Timu anymore. But I thought, you know, maybe there's some diamond painting things that might work for helping me and helping my grandchildren at a low cost. You just peel this puppy off, stick it on there. And then get your plastic, and there's a bag of them. I'll show you in a second. Let me go get the bag. Okay, so for here I just have this little thing that I got. I forget where I got this from, whether it was Amazon or Timu back in the day. But these are the little trays that Timu gives you. They're really cheap boats. So I just have them stacked up, but they fit. Um, something else I'll show you in a minute. This is from Unimade. The boat they give you. So I'm keeping my boats together. And then this goes over the button of your light source on the light pad. Uh, it basically just prevents you from hitting it. It's a little cover. You stick the cover on and it snaps in and that way you have to intentionally touch, touch it in order for it to work. So I haven't placed that on there yet, but I do see why it's useful because my hand was hitting over there. And then these are the tweezers that I got from Unimade. And here are the other, did they give a name to them? No, of course not. Anyway, there's one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six in a set, different colors, fun, super, super useful. Now I'm not putting any of this information in the description as far as links. If you all see something that you might be interested, you let me know. But um, on these updates, I'm not going to. If I do coloring books specifically, I will. Got this little tray. You have, uh, it's heart shaped, so I thought it was cute. And you can put drills in here too. So you have two sets and then just goes together and it has a little diamond on it, which I thought was cute. And then this little guy also with the magnet in order to hold your plastic up, got that. You put this piece underneath this on top and it keeps your plastic up while you're done painting. And I thought that was a cute little guy. 
And these papers are just the wax papers, and that's what I used on this painting here. That's what these are, these sheets. Again, going for cheap. <laughs> and these are what comes with the Timu Diamond paintings. This little wax here, it's not enough to do a whole painting. It's hardly enough to do this small one. Um, and they have the placers, but to get you started, it's not bad. And these are great for my grandchildren because in case they break or, you know, do something wild with it, then I'm not out a bunch of money, you know. And then I got some of these pens that have different attachments. So here's your roller after you put your diamonds on. You want to make sure they're in there. You get a roller. And this basically should unscrew. I'm having trouble with it because my hands are hurting. But I'll show you this end. Actually, this one may not unscrew. Yeah, it does. I almost had it. Sorry. So the pen comes like this. And you can screw on different attachments. And it had these fun little placers that are rainbow coated. So for instance, let's put the six on. It just screws in there like this, tightens up. And then you have your different placers and you can take the roller off and you can either put your, your cap back on, which just slides on or you can do your single placer, for instance, and just screw that. I like these screw-ons better than the push-ons because I have trouble with some of those plastic ones. But yeah, it's a cute little pen and colorful and rainbow. So how can you go wrong with that? And I like that the, the metal. And then this pen here... Now this one has the plastic ones, and I'll show you what I mean. But the beauty of this pen is it lights up. So at night, it lights up. So that's fun. It's good for aging eyes. <laughs> and it gives you a, a, a warm tone or a cool tone. Uh, but it's they're harder to get off. Having a little easier time now, of course, since I'm videoing, but... This is how the, um, I forget the name of the tool, but it lines up your diamonds. And then we have, um, let's just put on this plastic, looks like a three placer. Yeah. So there you go. And I've got yellow already on my hand, so I'll do it here. <laughs> and I'll change. Now, who knows how long that light will last. And this doesn't screw off, so I don't know how you'd replace the battery, but I thought that would be good for my aging eyes. Of course, if you're using this pad, you don't necessarily need it, but it is helpful. And then, now remember, I've got grandchildren that are going to be, my granddaughter especially, is going to want to use some of these colorful ones too. So I got this. I thought this was a really cute purpley and blue pen. And let me see. Oh, there's the opening. Some of these I hadn't fully opened yet. All right. And it has these little things here. Huh. Oh, I guess they're in between here. So if you need to replace them. Okay, I get it. I get it. So that one's a push on. And then let's put a big one on. That's maybe an eight. So that one went in easier. But yeah, I thought this one was cool. I like the thicker pens, by the way. They, they're much easier. They have the indentation here. It's nice. And you have several different types of placers. You've got your angled single placer. So yeah, you get a nice little variety. And again, I haven't spent a lot of money, so I don't feel bad if they don't work eventually. But I think you can't go wrong with a 
resin pen. They should last. And I have another roller because I'll have three grandchildren doing this with me. And this is the one that came from Unimade. And then I have one more pen to show. This one's kind of fun. This one has a bunch of confetti in it. And I already put the placers a single. And I've already worked with this one. Let me mash down that wax that's in there. That's the Timu wax. So yeah, this is, um, and there's wax in that end too. But this one was a lot of fun. I used this last night. And it's got different plastic placers too. Multiple types. So I think that's it as far as the pens and stuff. So I have this little tray so far. And then let me show you the storage box. So Timu has diamond painting art storage books. And this was a sticker. Now I put it upside down and <laughs> all the things, so I'm a mess. But basically you can store 30 by 40s in here. And let me get rid. So there's one that I got that's a little bigger than the small one. Here's another one. Like I said, I used the Google Lens to basically, I took a picture off of Timu before I purchased them, went through Google Lens to see if there was an artist to give credit to, and I did not find any specifically for these images. And so, yeah. But I did go through that effort. I want to give credit when credit is due. So here's the 20 by 20, which is the one that I have. And I thought the little ones, I got um, a few others, like more dragons for the boys. But I thought these would be simpler to teach my smaller ones, my smaller grandbabies to get it into. So yeah, you have lots of sheets here and it's a good way to store them. So I peeled up the plastic and flattened it and yeah, so they can be stored in here. And you've got this little thingamabob in the back. And I can store them like that. Here's another one that's 40 by 40 that doesn't fit in there. It's a castle scene. And again, you have ZTMO735, for instance. And I can go here to all of the diamond drill packages and find my ZTM. Uh, that's 2487, so that doesn't go with that one. Here's ZTM735. And ZTM0735. So that's the way that I can match my drill sets. And I can put these in a drawer and be good to go. So I thought I would show you that. And then a couple other things I got. This is a styrofoam. Sorry for the noise. thought this would be good for the kiddos too. It's styrofoam and it has these boats and all these boats fit it. So I've got multiples. Yeah, I always have to think of the kids losing things or breaking things. So it's one of the reasons why I did Timu again against my better judgment, but they do have uh, things inexpensively and less expensive than on Amazon. Sometimes the products are even the same to be honest, but more expensive. So these pull out and they go back in. So I thought that would be a good option for them. And they can have their putty waxes in here. I've got several heart-shaped ones that'll fit in there. And again, if you want to see the two Diamond Art Club uh, paintings that I got on box, I can do that in a separate video so I can give it the, the proper time to show you all the drills and good stuff. Here's another storage box. It's very similar to the other one. I didn't want the kids having to fight over. So I got two of them. I wind up getting some of these diamond paintings, the small ones for free because you know, you do the spin thing on Timu and you get 70% off and then you get a coupon and all the things. So 
that's the part I, I, I like and dislike at the same time because they're getting you to buy more. <laughs> but here's also a box with the stickers. And these are little Tic Tac storages. And this comes completely, you have the flip top and it also does come out. So you can pour them in, put this on. You've got a flip top and you can put um, labels on wherever. I guess, you know, you wouldn't want to put it on the top because you're flipping it up and bending it. But they would go great on the sides or even this way. That would be good too. And let's see, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 30, 45, 60. There's 60 of them. So I thought that would be good too for bigger ones. And then also got this cute little set. Also thought this would be fun for the kids on this smaller. This is a plastic top. It comes off. And then you have your little small trays. And then you have a little brush so that you can mess with your little drills and a scoop. And this snaps off so you can use either one. And then you can also take all of them out and have a big drill box. And then this comes out, I think, yep, for your drills, as do these on the side. You see they have them. Yeah, I thought this was cute. All right, and then you've got the plastic lid. one of the things that I didn't show you is that I also got some of these. These are helpful when you take off the plastic and you want to smooth it, right? When you initially like have rolled up canvases or whatnot, you know, peel back the plastic and then you can use these to then smooth it out. And it also straightens out your canvas while you're doing it. So I've got two of those from Timu. And then on Amazon, I got blue tack for um, the reusable adhesive uh, to use for diamond paintings. And I'll probably use this for my diamond art club and I'll just work with the wax uh, for the others. So that's diamond painting over with. And then I want to show you a little more coloring stuff. If you've hung in there with me, I got a few new books. I got the Astro Kawaii by Kevin Teo Art. It's the grayscale coloring book. This was printed in 2022. And here's the little icons of the pictures inside and these are super cute images look how fun <laughs> they make me laugh <laughs> I love the expressions <laughs> and he's titled them there's page numbers yeah so I thought this was a really cute book to get fun fun stuff in here now when I do proper hauls I will do my I usually do three quarter to full flip throughs but for an update I'm just gonna give you a glance I got doggy doodles by Angela Gonzalez I saw this on Instagram her coloring on some of these and so I decided to get that especially with a new puppy <laughs> And these are so sweet and cute. Great for alcohol markers and using your metallics, not metallic pens, gel pens. Look how sweet these are. Aren't they adorable? <laughs> Love it. They're in Paris. Oh, that would have been cute for Valentine's Day. Just in case I can get to it. Oh, look at that coffee page. <laughs> oh, they're so cute. The poodles. Oh my gosh. He's on a floaty. Oh, there's another fun Valentine's. There's a few in here. 
Super cute images. I love Angela Gonzalez. I wouldn't say she's an auto buy, but she's close to it. <laughs> and then I had pre-ordered the Creative Haven Daydreams coloring book by Angela Porter. I love Angela Porter. I don't color in her books as often as I want to, but I love her images. This is copyrighted in 2024, obviously, with it being a pre-order. You've got your perforated pages. And here are some of the images displayed in this book. I love hot air balloons. Obviously, it's called Daydreams, so we've got a lot of dreamy action in here of fun places. Ooh, look at that castle. Believe it or not, it's not as detailed as some of her books. Some of them are just super, super, super detailed. These look like lots of fun. Oh, look at the cactus. Look at the little creatures. Oh, more hot air balloon and mountains. There's a nice lighthouse page. Beautiful mountain snow tips, it looks like. Oops. So yeah, those are the kind of pages that are in daydreams. Here's one colored. Look how cute that is. I love this one too. That's a good inspiration. So that's Daydreams by Angela Porter. And then I had ordered a while ago the Coloring Heaven Pocket Size Magic Jars. It's funny, I just saw Dusty Coloring D show that she had gotten this book. She's already colored a page in it, I think. But these are adorable. And like her, I hope that they will come out with more of these pocket sized because these are really great. <laughs> Look how adorable. They're just the right size, you know. It's nice to have the smaller books. In between some, like, Kirby Rosanna's double page spreads. <laughs> I love this B one. They're just so cute and adorable. I know there's several, like, Magic Jar um, books out there. And I, I do have one of them. Several of them I do not. I actually like this one a lot. This would kind of be a fun group buddy color book. I don't know how many people are interested. But let me know if you are. Maybe I'll do a poll on the community tab. But yeah, these are super cute. <laughs> so that's it for the books. I haven't gone all out on the books. Because I was getting some things for the grandbabies for the uh, diamond art. And also I have been busy coloring. Mostly in bed. <laughs> Which does not make me super thrilled, but you got to do it where you can do it. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoy the update format. If not, let me know. If you do, let me know. Uh, it is a little difficult to do the long color longs, not just because it takes hours to do a page, but the video editing honestly takes three times as long. And that's the part that a lot of people don't realize is that behind the scenes, it's it's pretty grueling. I try to take my uhs and ums and sos. I don't always get them all out, to be honest with you. But while I'm thinking of something ahead of time, I wind up saying those uhs and ums. And I, and I hate that. But anyway, besides even that taking those out, you know, there's, there's portions you wind up cutting out because maybe it's unnecessary conversation or... When I leave and come back, I have to delete those sections. Also, sometimes the audio can be really weird or maybe Shmoo is barking and I want to minimize that. Sometimes it's going to be in there. There's no way to prevent it with a puppy. Um, just like I I didn't edit him out of my Uhuhu organizer video, if you all saw it. He just came up here. He wanted to check out the Uhuhu box. <laughs> and it was just too much fun. <laughs> I sent my video back to the uh, Uhuhu collaborator and uh, she laughed. She said it was so funny. But but yeah. So I hope that explains a little things about my health. I, I'm not normally very private about that kind of stuff. So it feels vulnerable to share that I'm having those issues. But I feel like I have to explain those issues in order to share why long color longs are going to be difficult for me for, for a while. I don't know how long. You know, I don't want to put a date to it. But it seems to me like it would be more beneficial to you all to see me coloring in multiple books. And I know it's nice to see from beginning to end and see all the colors someone uses. And I definitely see the benefit of doing that too. But this way it kind of gives you a glimpse into 
all the books that I'm in that I say, oh, in February, I'm going to color these books. And then you actually do get to see me color in them and see my progress and the pencils I'm using. And I can make comments on what I like and dislike, <clears throat> excuse me, about the pencils. I've just thrown a little diamond art stuff in there because I, I'm going to need to vary myself a little bit, just physically, honestly. I hope that I made sense in this video. It's kind of scrambled for me in my head. So I keep, hope it came out okay. Thank you for Colored by Maya for having updates in her videos because it really does give colorists an opportunity to kind of give you a view in on how they're working a page rather than just showing you maybe one color along a month and then you get presented with 14 pages that you never got to see the person you're subscribed to, your coloring friend, actually color. Just want to give a shout out again to Colored by Maya. I know coloring with K is following the same suit, and I think it probably serves the community well to do it, but I also want to do what you all want from me. We're all individuals, even though we are YouTube colorists, we are still individuals, and each with our own set of challenges, some work, some have children, in my case, grandchildren, and, you know, it can be tough to juggle all of that. I hope you did enjoy it. That's my long-winded version of why. I hope to see you in the next video. Don't forget to like the videos. It really, I know it's really tiring to hear YouTubers say that, but it really does make a difference on whether or not our channel gets promoted on YouTube. If there's not enough likes, if there's not comments, it just kind of says stays dead in space on YouTube and doesn't go anywhere. And I'd love for more people to be part of our community so that we could have more group community buddy colors and have more people participating. It's growing exponentially each month. It would be nice to have other people maybe know about it. Get to know all of you. Get to know me. I hope you all have a good weekend. You all take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for hanging around. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.